What's up, Warner Von Long right here, and today we're going to talk about the first rap record ever. And I'm holding this in my hand, but this is not it. This is uh, what many people think of as the first rap record ever, and to be fair, I can see why they say that, and we'll come back to that in a minute. It's Rapper's Delight by the Sugar Hill Gang, but it's not the first. The first, wow, King Ten III, Personality Jock by Fatback. This came out on Spring Records, Spring as you see, which came in, by the way, some kind of cool actually had green for their inside uh, insert papers uh, on 1979 of course so okay so now getting back to comparing it to rappers delight I mean the reason why I could see people really giving this credit is the first rap record by a rap group Fatback was a band that had been around for years it was you know a disco funk band that a lot of great hits a lot of good stuff but Sugar Hill Gang was just wow that's all they were they were rappers well actually that's not strictly true they sang a lot, especially on the first album, but really, they were a rap group, as opposed to Fatback, which was, you know, a funk band, which did one isolated incident of a rap record, where they hired uh, a radio DJ, uh, which is, of course, King Tim the uh, Third, to do this sort of, almost a novelty song, I guess, on their album, um, and then later that became the single, actually, that became the B-side. See, I'm holding here the 12-inch, because, you know, real men like 12 inches, not the little... 45 7 inch nonsense stuff, but the 7 inch actually came out first. And the 7 inch was a song called You're My Candy Sweet by Fatback, and then this personality jock was strictly on the B side. But one of those classic cases, B side wins again, everybody was interested in that. So by the time the 12 inch came out, personality jock was the A side, You're My Candy Sweet's on the B side. And to sort of speak to how this was, again, you know, not really a rap artist record, it was a fatback joint. If you actually look at the credits, they make it King Tim III Personality Jock is the title, as if King Tim III is part of the title and not, you know, the name of the rapper. Now, I know even this, even to say this is the first rapper record, is a little controversial. Um, there's certainly a lot of people out there who would say there have been previous rap records. In fact, Freddie Fresh's book, the first edition, he calls uh, Personality Jock the second rap 12 inch ever, but the first to play it on the radio. And in the second edition, he kind of amends that, and he just says the first rap 12 inch on radio, which still sort of applies that there was a previous rap 12 inch, but he doesn't actually really kind of make that claim anymore. Um, because it's certainly, <laughs> it's debatable, put it that way. Because a lot of people will hold up a lot of stuff by a lot of artists that are saying, well, this is pre-rap, like Last Poets, of course, are a great example. Um, some people very specifically point up, like a blues guy, um, whose name escapes me, and I should have looked it up before I started this video, but it's too late now. <laughs> and then there's also a Broadway musical album, which has a very kind of hip-hop-ish moment, and a lot of people point to that and say, well, that's really the first rap record. That came out, you know, late 78 or early 79. And, you know, I could see that, but if you listen to it, I don't know, it's not really a rap song. And when you listen to these other things, you know, again, like Last Poets, yeah, they're sort of rapping in the sense that they're kind of, you know, talking over music with a rhythm, you know, rhythmical cadence, but it's definitely not the same genre that came out of disco, it's not the same stuff that came out of the movement of the DJs of, you know, Highwood and Grandmaster Flash, you know, that was like a separate thing. I mean, you could have people, you know, just doing a sort of spoken word style all the way back to like fucking Shakespeare and playing on lutes and stuff like that, you know? Um, but that none of that came from the real movement that is hip-hop. So if you want to talk records where anybody's sort of rapping on it, yeah, I mean, there's heaps that go way back before hip-hop existed, way back into the 60s, the 50s, probably, I mean, probably almost as early as recorded music existed. There's probably an Al Jolson song where he's almost doing a rap kind of skit or something. <laughs> Maybe not, but you get what I'm saying. So with that said, for all intents and purposes, King Tim III really is the first rapper on record. Of course, not the first rapper. They've been rappers around for years with the Cold Crush, etc., etc., and you know all about that and Cool Herc. But this was the first rapper on record. And then, of course, Sugar Hill followed that up a few weeks later. So the last question is, how is it? It's pretty good. It's a little light on the rapping, having just gone all through about how it's the first rapper on all this, to now say it's light on the rapping. You know, I mean, there's long stretches of instrumentality, uh, the backup singer is singing, you know, so... You know, like I said, it's, it's, King Tim doesn't really come off as a strong force on his own record. Well, I guess you could say it's not his own wrong record, it's Fatback's record. Um, but it's definitely funky. If you like disco era hip-hop, this is definitely up there. I mean, there's so many great disco era hip-hop records, so I can't even really say it's one of the best, but it's, it's up there. It's a great record. I'm going to play some clips of this. Yeah, 
on your feet Cause you're listening to the sound of the Shem Shadi I'm the K-I-N-G, the D-I-M King Jim the Nerd, and I am him Just me, Fat Mac, and the crew We do it all, just for you We're strong as an ox and told as a tree We can rock it so viciously We throw the highs in your eyes, the bass in your face We're the funk machine that rock the human race Skate down, we're getting shot Come on girl, let's do the rock Slam, dunk, do the jerk Let me see your body work So you hear my candy sweet, which is the B side on the 12 inch again, or the A side on the 7 inch, not hip hop at all, strictly classic fat back style stuff, which means it's sort of, you know, funky light disco stuff. It's good, you know, fat back was a dope band, it's a good stuff. Um, the singing doesn't really do it for me, and I don't just mean that in the sen general sense that I prefer hip hop to singing, although I do, but I mean the singing on this particular record, you know, I don't know, he sounds pretty tired. <laughs> it almost sounds like he went to the studio and did a quick track and he said okay remember we're going to replace those vocals before we release this and then they forgot and just released it as is so the singing's a little uh little lame but it's still a dope record so it's got some great playing and that's one of the reasons why this record is so good it's got some great musical backing by a really quality legitimate band obviously sugar hill records had the strength of you know fats comet being the sugar hill band but a lot of times you know you hear about like you know soul sonic force talking about zoo nation throw down this thing you know it's like circus music and all these people were sort of hiring you know some pretty uh, studio musicians of vari varying qualities on different labels, uh, but Fatback, Fatback is a great band, so you know they provided some serious quality music to the background to this. <laughs> Personality Jock, King Tim III was a hit. It did really well. It was eclipsed somewhat by the Sugar Hill Gang, but it certainly made a lot of noise on its own, got a lot of attention, sold a lot of records. Spring Records realized this, and King Tim came back the next year, 1980, with a follow up called Charlie Says, which is really, really funky. Again, it's a little light on King Tim's vocals. Um, Again, you got a lot of instrumental pauses, you got a lot of the backup singers singing, although they're dope. But, uh, you know, so it's not really heavy on the rap, and you certainly not compared to something like a Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five kind of joint. But it's a lot of fun. It's a classic roller skating disco song. Play some clips of this. I really dig this one. And 
and that's just backed with the instrumental. That's all there is. The one song Charlie says, and that was it for King Tim the Third. These were his, this was his whole musical career. Unfortunately, uh, he was dope. Not really the best MC, but quality put out some dope records so sort of a shame he didn't do more but again you could see why he would be eclipsed by rappers like Melly Mel and so uh, <laughs> and since he was always really I suppose a radio DJ first and a rapper second it was probably not the emphasis of his career so till next time Werner von Lonrod peace out <laughs>